What's up video creator, it's videomark.net. We are back with a new tutorial today. We will be looking at the text behind object effect. It's pretty similar to the frame blocking we did the other day, but um, this effect right here, it's uh, actually pretty simple. It, it also requires a manual mask, but you're gonna need a little finesse when creating the masks. So multiple masks in terms of rotoscoping, but basically pretty simple to do. So let's have a look. Right, we're in our timeline here and let's assume we are creating a fashion promo within Premiere Pro. We got our text here. It's a simple text, nothing fancy. Um, I'm assuming you know how to create a new text object in Premiere Pro. So what we want to do is actually put that text behind the model. Okay. The first thing we're going to do is actually take that clip and hold the alter option key and then just start dragging and move it over. So it's above our text actually. So when we hide this one, you see our text is right below. And at first we have to determine the area that you want to mask out because you want to save some work and don't want to do too much. And as we can see right around here, she's going to hit that text. And with the clip selected, hit the M key, which is going to set a keyframe. And then right around here, she is uh, passed. She has passed that text right here. And that's the area that we want to work in, okay? So tip number one is actually separating the object, in this case, the model, into different areas when masking it. Most channels showing you this technique actually will just trace the profile of the object. The problem though is this, when this, let me, let me just uh, show you what I mean. Like when I go to the effect controls right here, and then choose the pen tool. And what they will do is they will start tracing this. Da, 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 da. Let me do this quick and dirty here. And um, what this does is it might work at first, but then let's, let's follow this motion when this hand actually is moving behind the body, then you have the problem that you now have to go in and tweak these additional points and line them up with the silhouette. And it's you can assume it's a very tedious task and you're gonna run into more problems that, than necessary, okay? So that's not what we wanna do. What we actually want to do is create separate separated masks for each area, like, of the limbs, arms, legs, head, torso, because then it's much easier to tweet, to tweak, <laughs> tweet, uh, to tweak the mask accordingly when she's moving around. She's not doing a lot of motion here, but let's say she would raise the arms and, and whatnot, then it would be significantly more difficult to adjust this mask. That's the reason why in most tutorials you don't see them actually selecting examples or clips where there's a lot of motion. People are sitting on bikes or, or whatnot, no waving arms. That of course is really easy to do, but when you have swinging arms, it's a little more complex, okay? That's a pretty common rotoscoping technique. If you haven't heard that term, rotoscoping is actually something used in most in visual effects. And there's dedicated people doing that, rotoscoping artists and their expertise actually creating these masks, okay? And they would really go in and separate, split that in different areas of masking. In our case, let's say we're here. That's a good starting point. Just remember, we have to go back and forth, but we need this, we need the perfect starting point to determine, okay, which separated masks do we need? In this case, I would actually, to keep it simple, I would split it in two masks. So one main mask for the torso. The back swinging arm is not moving too far away from the torso, so it, it, it doesn't actually need an extra mask, but that one arm to the front definitely needs its own dedicated mask, okay? So what we wanna do is we're going to click on the pen icon, and we want to create the first mask for the arm. And for that, I will zoom in a little bit and go forward right here and start clicking and dragging and creating that first mask, okay? And with this type of shot, I can tell you that you don't have to be super accurate because there's some motion in it and you can still clamp the mask and adjust the expansion and in movement, most of the time, it's going to look okay, right? 
So this is our first mask. When we hide that other one, here's our mask. So let's create the second mask here. So it says mask one. When we click on that pen icon again, it's going to create another one. And this one, let's zoom in. in. Let's zoom in again. This one is going to be for the whole torso. Maybe that's uh, too much because we're going to have to, we want to see the whole mask area. The mask needs to be from around the neck to maybe um, where the knees are. Okay. So let's uh, start creating that mask as well. Right here, back to the pen tool. And just so you know, I'm switching back between the hand tool with uh, the, the shortcut for the hand tool, is, which is the H key. And the pen tool in this case would be back to the selection, okay? The V key. So we start dragging and we wanna create our main mask. And remember, we have a mask for the arm already. So what we actually want to trace is the torso, okay? For the body. Back to the V key, to the pen tool, and right around here, we can actually make that turn, then go here. And here, remember, we don't want a dedicated mask for, this, for the other hand. So what we want to do is continue that main mask and go right around the hand here. And as you can see, there's some motion blur going on. So that's a good reason that you don't have to be too accurate. And in this case, we're gonna have to zoom in a little more. So we get around this. And we got our main mask, okay? So when we zoom out and click on our second mask, this is the first one, that's the arm, and the second one, that's the main mask. The next thing you wanna do, click on uh, auto keyframing for both masks so you have a reference point where act these masks are actually located. And now the second step would be actually animating the mask. The other thing that most people would do is from here, go frame by frame. But the best thing to do is actually move to the next key point or key frame visually, and then mask that area because you might get away with interpolation and you don't have to mask or touch every single frame. And that way you will save a little work and don't wouldn't have to go through each frame one by one. So what we could do, let's, let's hide the text here with the main mask selected, move it over a little bit. And as you can see, it's almost, well, not that, not that much, but we're gonna tweak it now. So of course, that's the, the manual work that you have to go through. You have to uh, tweak the mask so it fits um, the profile here like this. So as you can see, when we scrub through this now, what I mean that you would actually get, could get away when, we, uh, when we're between these two keyframes, you might get away with not even recording any manual keyframes here. Um, you might get away with the automatic, automatic interpolation, okay? Let's do the same thing for the hand. And as you can see, it's moving right here. So we want to actually rotate that mask a little bit. And when you hover over a corner of this mask, it will let you rotate it. And here, I'm pretty sure we will get away with only rotating the mask, okay? And let's see what that looks like. Almost. The good thing about the hand now is that it's not in and of itself moving. She's not making a fist or making any signs or pointing the fingers or something. So here you can just adjust the mask a little bit and 
That's basically it. I think I would say that's good enough. Okay. Of course, I'm going to have to go through and cover the whole area that we determined for the masking. So uh, I will pause the video here and come back when it's done. All right, so we did go through and created all these keyframes for the main mask and this secondary mask, this hand, which we will use for both hands. But now we're left to with, uh, let me play this. So I need an out point and play. Now we're left with a few more tweaks with, as you can remember, we started right in the middle when she's catching up with this mask, but the beginning is missing actually. So that's what we will go through and create as well. Basically working backwards. And I will pause that as well and then be right back with you in a minute. All right, I did go ahead and created the other remaining keyframes. And now we're done with this effect. And the main takeaway here is um, we did this way, we did place the text behind her. But the main takeaway is creating two dedicated masks for one for the for the hand and the other for the main body. Okay, there are other ways to do this. You could if the mask in and of itself wouldn't change a lot, you could use um, the forwards forward track of the of the mask, which could have worked for this main mask. Uh, I'm not sure but I did go ahead and create it in manually. There's also other techniques uh, in After Effects, for instance, where you can auto rotoscope things and or use a difference, a, a difference map. <laughs> which will actually auto create different pixels and mask your foreground area for you, which is something that we will be looking into in a follow-up tutorial to this, okay? But this is basically the process to create this text behind object effect. It's very similar to this frame blocking thing that we did the other day, but either way, you will have to go in and create your mask manually, tweak the keyframes and take it from there. But rotoscoping is uh, the thing that you should consider here because um, again, when if let's say she would be waving or something, it would get kind of complicated to work to be stuck with only one main mask and tweak the points uh, from there. Plus, Premiere Pro is kind of limited when it comes to actually combining these masks, subtracting or adding to the mask, which is something that you should actually uh, consider doing in After Effects. But other than that, um, when you are left with pretty simple masks and, and uh, animations, that's something you can definitely do in Premiere Pro. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something new. Um, so thank you for watching. I hope you learned something new. If you did, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing. Don't forget to hit that notification bell for new videos. And uh, I'll see you in the next tutorial.